coming out of leg lifts. Okay. You, you, you lean back as you, you shift your hip, as, as you lead your hips forward, you lean back. All right, and then and you let your, your lift leg fly ahead. So the problem is initially, when you come out of leg lift and you're trying to start all that good momentum going forward and then you lean back, you kind of you slow it down. Okay. You, you don't want to counter your momentum. You want to really build with your momentum. Right. So the trunk staying back is good to load the arm, but you don't want it to slow your momentum down, right? So we got to work on how you keep your momentum going. Because when you don't have a lot of momentum, you get rotational very fast, and that's what's happening. Yeah, and I'm big time rotation. So if we go hip line, shoulder line, you can see you start rotating like right out of the gate. Like, look at your hips. That's the first thing to go. High velocity guys, it actually goes the other way. Like a hitter, a high velocity guy, his leg, lift leg will come down, and he'll sit into his glute, and his hips will spin counter. It'll go this way. Okay. You're doing the opposite. You're coming out and you're opening and you're exposing. You're starting rotation early. Okay. And then you kind of kill it right here. And then you just, you, you slowly ride it and you lean into it. So like in this position here, your lift legs way out, you're open, your knees turning inwards, you're collapsing and you're leaning over that. So all your weight is forward in your quad. Right. So probably more than likely why your hips went forward is because you shift right into your quad. So if I lift my leg and shift into my quad, I'm gonna go right into rotation. But if I lift my leg and sit into my hip, I actually go into counter rotation. So instead of going backwards, I should be going straight down into it? Or sitting back into it, like, okay. like you're squatting like a weight. Okay. But the point is, is because you're shifting forward, it's starting rotation, it's leaning your trunk, which is c collapsing your knee and your hip, right? And now this is just laying down and you're pushing it down with you leaning over it. Mm -hmm. And now all your power is gonna be you just pulling across your body. So if we look at kinematic sequence, because out of leg lift, you lean into your quads, it does start your hips early. And you do put, by pushing your hip down, it creates some speed through it. And it does go off before your trunk. So there is separation there. The problem is, is the blue is your glove. So the, this is your, the red is your hip peak. The green is your trunk peak. But the problem is, is your glove is peaking faster than your hip. And that's your glove pulling behind your back. Okay. okay? And what, that, what that's doing is it's killing the energy being pushed to your trunk. Because normally when you see your hip is peaking here, your trunk peaks way up here. Uh -huh. But because you're pulling your glove at the exact same time, it's it's killing the delivery of energy to your trunk. Okay. It's kind of like, here come my hips to create the power, but no, I'm going to pull across my body and, and yank the, the trunk around arm with my glove side, as opposed to letting it power through my, my, my hips lead and then my trunk go. Okay. Right? So... So the problem is there's good and bad things going on. That's why this is very kind of mixed up. Mm -hmm. The good thing is you start your hips very early. You get them to peak early. We got separation. The bad thing is, is it doesn't transfer much energy to your trunk because your, your glove disrupted it and pulled ahead of it, okay? And also too, your posture was causing that because everything's ipsilateral leaning over your hip. I can always tell guys, how am I gonna rotate this hip to drive it through if I'm leaning over it? right i have to be leaning back to drive that hip through. okay so we've got to work on your posture to fix a lot of this up okay. and a lot of times when i lean over and i suffocate my hip now how am i going to bring my shoulder around then i have to pull my glove to bring my shoulder around, and that's what you're doing okay and then all that just keeps everything is, is going so rotational it just delivers everything to a sidearm slot maybe we're talking over here you're at a 230 slot and the interesting thing is that, you know, 1230 spin axis. And I think that's just because you do push your trunk out well, which allows you to pronate more into your pitch and then it brings your spin axis up. But also too, notice how your front leg doesn't extend or drive. So I like how you're getting your trunk to go forward, right? You're hitting front foot, 
you're you're letting that back hip that went early like it's supposed to carry your trunk forward you're just creating a lot of power and rotation so to clean all this up we have to get the posture up we have to sit into the glute and delay rotation better then we have to deliver the hip without the glove pulling okay. and then we want everything to go from there then your slot will come up and then you'll get that spin access better because you won't have your i mean your spin efficiency better because your spin axis won't be so vertical to your sidearm uh, release point your sidearm release point will be up here with your spin axis which will take meaning you won't be getting around the ball. It'll kill the rifle spin. So your spin efficiency goes up, which will take your good spin rate and lift your it more vertical. Then you go 18, 19 inch vertical jump and you'll have a more rising pitch okay. than to me, which looks like more of a flat pitch. Okay.